What is going on everyone? Thanks for entering the lobby of hobbies. I'm Jazz and today we're taking a look at the newest expansion from Stonemeyer Games to Tapestry. This is the second expansion and this is called Arts and Architecture. Now this is co-designed by Jamie Stegmeyer and Mike Young and this is one that adds some completely new elements to the game, even ones that weren't previously introduced in the first expansion, Plans and Ploys. Now I want to give a shout out to Stonemeyer Games for sending this over to me. That way I can get it to the table, check it out, and give you guys my honest opinion on what I think of it. So if you enjoy Tapestry, if you're looking for something fresh, something new, you might want to stay tuned, so let's get into it. Okay, now for those not familiar with Tapestry, let me give you a brief overview. Tapestry is a civilization engine building game where you take on the role of a unique civilization with its own unique power. And you are trying to utilize your unique power along with the cards you're going to play, the technologies you discover, and the different advancement tracks that you're going to be able to move up to score points and win the game. Now, you're going to be moving up four um, advancement tracks. You have the exploration track where you are going to discover new lands, the military track which you are going to be conquering those lands, the technology track where you will be inventing technologies and upgrading those technologies to gather resources and score points, and then lastly, the science track where you are going to be rolling the science die that will determine what other tracks you might be moving up. Now, as you move up these four tracks and play these various cards, you will be gathering income buildings that you can play out into your capital city to uh, develop it and gather resources and score points. Um, you will also be trying to race up these tracks and gather landmarks that are going to be larger buildings that you can place into your capital city that will you know, fill up your city a lot quicker than some of those smaller income buildings that will, again, grant you those resources and those points a lot quicker. But what does this new expansion add that wasn't previously added in the first expansion? I'll tell you. It is a fifth advancement track, and this is called the arch track. Now, as players are trying to um, race up this track, there are going to be new things that they can discover or create along the way. The first one being these masterpiece cards. Now these masterpiece cards, when players create them, are going to go out onto their player board and they are going to be activated during the income phase of the game. They're going to be gathering points um, during that phase and they're also going to be getting new resources and sometimes even upgrading some of their technologies. But players not only will be um, gathering these masterpiece cards on the income track or on this advancement track, they will also be able to upgrade their income tracks on their player boards with these new inspiration tiles. Now, when you land on the inspiration space of the arch track, you will be able to place and choose one of these four tiles to place out onto your board. And in essence, it makes your income track underneath your income buildings stronger and more powerful, granting you more points, granting you more resources. But also in this game, you are going to be getting not only new uh, landmarks that you're going to be discovering um, or racing for, for with these uh, five new landmark tiles, um, some of these landmarks are going to pay homage, or many of these are going to pay homage to previous Stonemaier game releases, um, like uh, Wingspan, if you've ever heard of that one. Um, you have this bird-watching perch that is going to pay homage to Wingspan. You have the clock tower that will um, be indicative of Pendulum. And then one of my favorite games of all time, uh, Viticulture, you have this little uh, wine villa that you can acquire from these landmark cards. As well, you will be getting access to six new um, capital city maps. Now, these capital city maps are what they call advanced capital cities. Now, they play much differently than those in the base game. Um, you have things like the canyon that has um, some cactuses out there that the cactuses only act as impassable terrain when they are completely surrounded. You have things like the cavern, where the cavern, when you're filling this up, you have to go from top to bottom and you only score points during the income phase 
for rows that are completed, not columns. But your rows are going to grant you two points instead of the previously mentioned one from the base game. You have the Mesa, where your um, buildings and your landmarks cannot overlap or be outside of the grid of your capital city. And then you have the swamp that has some lily pads that will act as impassable terrain. But if you don't cover the lily pads up before the end of the game, they will score negative points. You also will get five new um, civilizations in the game. Um, and I'll tell you right off the bat, one of my favorite civilizations um, from this expansion are the gamblers. I am one who is a sucker for um, you know, manipulating the card draw and trying to you know, get through the deck as fast as I can with those tapestry cards. This will allow you to draw three tapestry cards during um, your income phase and be able to play one of those three if it is a when played ability. Activate it and still during your income phase play a different tapestry card from your hand on top of it. Um, you have things like the collectors which will you're trying to gather um, different types of items and place on your player mat and depending on how many items you have at the end of the game it will grant you uh, a set number of points. And then you have something like the Renegades, where instead of using the benefit on the track that you've advanced up, you can use the benefit that's on your uh, civilization mat. So these are just um, some of the uh, differences with the civilizations that you're getting added, as well as the capital city maps. You're going to also get new technology cards. Your technology cards um, are going to act similar, but you have some new ones that to be able to reach the prerequisite on the top square space, you're going to actually have to place a landmark on this technology card to be able to advance it to the and activate the square, um, uh, the square advancement or the square upgrade ability on the card. You're also going to get uh, new tapestry cards. Your tapestry cards are going to be similar. Some new, th some new things obviously that are there, but you also have access to um, some. Uh, tapestry cards that have continuous abilities on them. Um, so these are things that uh, you know adds a new element to the game, adds some freshness to it as well. You're going to get a 20-sided die instead of the previous uh, science die that of course has to add space for um, the arch track as well. So these are the things that you're going to see in the new expansion. You have the new cards, uh, the new masterpiece cards, but primarily you have that new advancement track that is going to just give you something else to look for and move up to advance and score some points. All right, so when it comes down to it, what do I think of arts and architecture? Is this something you need to be adding? I say, if you are a huge fan of tapestry, this is a no brainer must add. Um, it's just more of what you love in that combo tastic turns that you're trying to kind of, you know, make that engine run and work the best to your ability. Um, for me, um, I enjoyed it. This is one that I've played with the Plans Employees expansion and then without the Plans Employees expansion. And this one made the game more interesting and more enjoyable for me than the first expansion. And, you know, it's something that you can mix all of it together right off the bat. But if you have the base game and you want to know, you know, which one is going to give you a fresh, you know, that breath of fresh air, um, something new, you know, a, a good feel that's going to kind of change the game a little bit, but not make it overly complex. This is what you want to add. Um, that's again, that's just my personal opinion. But um, if you're someone who suffers from a lot of AP or analysis paralysis, that board is going to just add to that complexity of the decision making and really is going to make that AP just skyrocket. But um, what's cool about this expansion is that it's modular, right? The rule book will let you know what cards you would need to omit if you're not using the board and you can just play with those cards, play with those um, uh, civilization maps and the uh, capital city maps and then work your way into using that fifth advancement uh, track and that's one that you know that's one thing that I liked about this expansion you didn't have to just go all in from the door you can kind of work your way up to that track um, but it's one that I had fun with you know, you know seeing more of the minis and seeing you know that viticulture villa out there just you know just gave me you know made me feel good um, but yeah I really enjoy this one. This is one, if you enjoy Tapestry, definitely check this one out. Look out for the pre-orders. But let me know down below, what do you think? Is this one that, you know, when it was announced, you were heavily looking forward to it um, after seeing it? Let me know what you think down below. I'd love to have a chat with you. But I'll see you guys out on the next one. <laughs>